Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. Two Italian giants clashed in Serie A as Pioli's AC Milan hosted Andrea Pirlo's Juventus. Pioli was looking to remain on top so a win would have been crucial and a defeat would have made it hard for Juventus to recover. In the end, the match ended 3-1 to Juventus thanks to goals by Chiesa and Weston McKennie, whilst Calabria netted for Milan. The XG indicated it was a deserved win, 2.36 to 1.03. The XG timelapse showed that Juventus created the better chances throughout the game. And if you want a closer look at both these teams, check out these videos that will be linked at the end of this one. But what tactics did both managers use? Let's take a look. A quick shout out to my Patreons for helping to make this video possible. If you want to support, head on over to patreon.com slash footballmadesimple and you'll get rewards like early access to videos and exclusive content. Here's how both sides lined up on paper at least. Pioli opted for the 4-2-3-1, whilst Pirlo on the other hand chose a 4-4-2. Let's first look at what Juventus looked to do in possession. They had the majority of the ball with 57% possession. And from deeper regions, they looked to play out short starting with Chesney, and the centre backs would often split to the width of the box whilst the four backs moved higher up the pitch. And Milan generally looked to press high, with a much lower passes per defensive action of just 9. Liao would be positioned just outside the box ready to press, and it would be Castilejo from the right who would often look to join the press rather than Chalanoglu, whilst the right back would then tend to push onto Fabrota. Ramsey tended to push narrow initially, so Chalanoglu remaining deep allowed a 3 vs 3 in midfield, and it meant that Fabrota could push high as there was no winger behind him. At times, this Milan press was successful, almost leading to a goal-scoring opportunity. But we did see Ronaldo at times move into the left channel, which would pin Dallo deeper and create space for Fabrota to receive and then look to play out. And higher up in open play, Juventus tended to look to maintain similar patterns. Ramsey was only a winger on paper and would use every opportunity to move central, whether high behind the forwards or deeper in these phases to help the build-up. With Castellejo often looking to pressure the second centre-back, it meant that Fabrotto could generally stay much higher and wider to provide the width. This shows in the average positions. And with an extra man deep, when Milan looked to continue their press, it would be one of Calabria or Kessier who would be drawn higher up the pitch, creating space. Pirlo aims to have men between the final line, so they would often look to take advantage of this, usually with Dybala dropping to receive. Although we did see Ramsey and Rabio using opposing movements at times, with Rabio charging into the space created. They often would then look to work it into the overlapping Fabrota in space, and he got into good crossing positions. In fact, he had the most crosses attempted for Juventus. But Chiesa on the right hand side was key for Juventus, as they looked to get him one on one with the fullback as often as possible. Danilo generally tended to remain deep or tuck in towards the midfield, so if Hager stayed tight on him, he couldn't double up on Chiesa. Dybala was also key as he often looked to drop between the lines drawing the attention of Kessier, so he couldn't move out wide to double up. We see some of these principles in the Juventus goals. For the first we see Hage is deep tracking Danilo and Rabiot occupies Kessier as Ramsey moves in to be the second pivot. All of this means that Chiesa is one versus one with his man. Dybala shows to receive the pass, and a lovely backheel gets Chiesa into a great position to score. 
For the second, we see Fabrota high and wide, dragging Caliabri out of position, as he looks to double up as Castellijo is caught higher. Dybala then gets into space and finds Chiesa, who takes an excellent first touch before finishing. But Milan looked dangerous in the transition from these phases. Rafael Liao in particular often looked to pull into the space behind Danilo, and he was often found as a man could get between the lines to play the pass, and this led to some promising situations. We see this in their goal, with Rabiot breaking forward as there is much space between the lines, so when Milan win the ball, they can easily find a man. Liao has pulled behind Danilo and is in acres of space. He then finds Calabria well who finishes. But how about Milan in controlled possession? What did they look to do? They also looked to build up short and could find their centre backs easier as Juventus were less intense with their pressing. When sitting deeper, Juventus' defensive shape could look more like a 4-5-1, with Ramsey moving infield to even up the numbers there, whilst Ronaldo moved to the left. However, usually Ronaldo was central to press a centre back. And interestingly, Juventus' double pivot tended to push high up the pitch onto Milan's deeper pivots. This left them vulnerable, and on several occasions we saw Chalanoglu able to receive the ball, turn and play an expansive pass to get Milan attacking, and his influence was unmistakable, with 5 key passes, 4 dribbles and the most touches for the side. Alternatively, we also saw Kessier drop into the back line towards the left to get more time on the ball whilst also freeing Hernandez to move higher up the pitch to provide width. In these phases, Chalanoglu would then drop deeper into midfield and Rafael Liao was also willing to drop into the 10 position with runners ahead of him to ensure that the midfield was never overloaded. However, Milan were not able to create too many high quality opportunities. And overall, Pirlo will be delighted with the win, putting them 7 points behind Milan, but with a game in hand. Milan will be happy that Inter also lost, but will need better performances in the big games in the future. But what did you make of the match? Drop it down below. Leave a football emoji somewhere in your comment so I can reply to you first. And as always, a big thanks to GetSag6, Lewis, as well as Shannon Brown for helping to support me on Patreon. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.